Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on how you can get A plus for modern mathematics in SPM. And first of all, I'll be talking about the format of this paper. And in modern mathematics, we have both paper 1 and paper 2. Paper 1 consists of 40 objective questions and you have to answer everything in 1 hour and 15 minutes and it contributes a total of 40 marks. And then for paper 2, we have section A and section B. Section A has 11 questions and you have to answer everything. Section B has 5 questions and you have to answer 4 questions out of 5. Firstly, I'll be giving you some format specific tips and then after that, I'll be giving you some general tips as well when it comes to revising to get A plus for modern mathematics. So first of all, we'll talk about the objective questions. The first tip when it comes to answering objective questions is to maximize your speed when you're answering those questions. Just try to finish those questions as soon as possible and as quickly as possible without making any careless mistakes. So try to be really careful but at the same time don't waste any time. Just try to finish the paper as soon as possible and this brings me to my second tip which is to always do the entire paper twice. So back when I sat for my modern maths paper, I always made sure that I had the time to do the paper twice so I would finish it one time and I would go back to question 1 again and do each question again back to question 40 just to make sure that I did not make any careless mistake the first time around. My third tip is super important and it is to make sure that the answers that you circle on your objective paper match with the ones that you shared on the OMR paper so you don't want to get correct for the one on objective paper and then realize that you shaded wrongly for your OMR. So make sure to check it at least twice so that you don't regret in the future. Next, we are going to talk about paper 2, section B. So out of 5 questions, you have to only choose 4. The 5 questions in section B are on graphs of function, transformation, statistic, plants and elevations, and earth as a sphere. So out of all these, you have to choose only 4, but I would say it is best to learn all 5 topics. Just learn everything. So usually the questions on graphs of function, transformation and statistics are easier to answer. So the two questions which I will try to choose from is plants and elevation and also earth as a sphere. Usually for paper 2 section B, I will just answer all five questions since the examiners will have to go through all five and then pick out the questions with the highest marks and award it to us. So usually I will just answer all five. The questions on plants and elevations can get tricky sometimes because they might come up with weird shapes for you. So actually the concept of plants and elevations is pretty simple. You just have to label everything and be precise and remember to like put in the measurements and everything. So the concept in itself is pretty simple, but it can get tricky once they give you some weird shapes, which is why I think that it is not a good idea to bet on plants and elevations, meaning like you decide to do plants and elevations and just not learn earth as a sphere. I ask you to rethink that. Um, I think it's best to learn all the questions, learn how to do all the questions and then just attempt all five questions. Now I'll be talking about the more general tips on how to score A plus for modern mathematics. I have eight tips for you and the first one is really basic. It is to pay attention in class. Pay full attention in class and try to understand everything the moment your teacher is teaching it to you. So if you have any doubts at all, just Raise your hand and clear your doubts. Ask your questions and if you don't want to raise your hand, then you can meet up with your teacher after class to clear your doubts. And because I think that there are more time-consuming subjects than modern mathematics, so I would suggest that you save up the time used to revise for modern maths by just understanding everything in the class so you can use all your other time to revise for other subjects because modern mathematics is not a difficult subject to score if you pay attention from day one and just understand everything stay on track my second tip is to make notes for modern mathematics yes you do need to make notes for modern mathematics but you don't need to do it at home so the best way to make notes for modern mathematics is to write things down when your teacher is teaching it to you so in class itself you have to be taking notes so some teachers actually require that you take notes and hand them in for them to check but other teachers aren't very particular about this so if your teacher is not particular about this then you should also take the initiative and make your own notes get a nice notebook and then write down notes as your teacher is teaching it to you just write down all the important stuff and 
If you take notes, you can remember what the teacher is teaching better and it can prevent you from losing your attention, prevent your mind from wandering somewhere else as well. And also, if you take notes and try to remember everything as you write them down, you don't even need to spend the time rereading your notes because the information will directly enter your brain and it's just there. And the third tip is to always show your working. So for modern mathematics, not only must the answer be correct, the full working must be there as well. So I think a common problem with modern mathematics is that we lose marks in our workings. Like we get the final answer, but then there are a few marks that we lose when it comes to showing our working. So one way to deal with this is to show full working when you're doing practice questions itself, like not in the exam hall. When you're doing practice questions, show the full working so that you familiarize yourself with the steps and that way you can show the full working in the exam hall without any problem at all. Tip number four is to do practice questions. It is so important to do practice questions for modern mathematics, which is why I insisted that you understand everything when you're in class itself. So when you're at home, you don't need to spend any time revising modern mathematics. You can just go straight to doing practice questions. So usually your teachers will assign you questions from the textbook. So make sure that you finish that with full working. And besides, you can also get yourself a set of passier questions and you can attempt those questions. And you are going to mark those questions and you're going to check for two things. So the first is of course the answer, you have to make sure that your answer is correct. And the second thing is that you have to check the working as well. Compare your own working with the working from the answer scheme. And if there are one or two steps that you missed out on, then use a red pen to add that in so that you can make sure that in the exam hall you are able to show the full working and get the full marks. Tip number five is to always recheck your answers and I think that this is one of the most crucial steps when it comes to scoring A plus in maths, whether in modern maths or in additional mathematics. Because when we are in a rush, it is so easy to make mistakes. So I always make it a point to do the question paper at least two times, whether for paper one or paper two. I just redo every question from the first question to the last question, no matter how hard or easy that question is. That question might be super easy but I also might have made a careless mistake like who knows so I always make sure that I recheck my answers and what tip number six is to skip the questions that you don't know first so this is true for all the subjects but especially for mathematics so once you open the paper and if you don't know how to answer the first question you are going to lose confidence right but don't spend too much time on it. If you really can't think of the answer, then you can just circle it, like put a star next to it or whatever, and then go proceed with the next question. And once you are able to answer one question correctly, you are going to feel so much better and more confident. And you're going to finish the entire paper and then revisit the questions that you have skipped. You could have skipped like five questions. It doesn't matter. You can just revisit it. Usually when I finish the entire paper and revisit the questions which I didn't know how to answer before, I will actually see that the questions are actually simple and I know the answer, I can do it. Because I feel much more confident once I could do other questions and there's also less time constraint since I have finished all the other questions. So I have enough time to think and come up with the answer. Which is why I think that it is so important to just skip the questions that you don't know first. It doesn't matter how many you have skipped, you are going to come back to it later and you will feel so much better about it. Tip number seven is to never cancel out any working and never leave a question blank. So for example, if you are attempting a question and then halfway through you realize that you cannot get the correct answer, like you are just stuck halfway. So do not correction tape it or cancel out your working because you might not get the marks for the final answer but those steps could buy you some marks you could maybe get two or three marks from those workings so never cancel out any working and also don't leave any question blank if you don't know how to answer that question then you can write down something which you can remember and maybe it could get you a few marks who knows just never never leave a question blank number eight which is my final tip is to never put hashtags so I don't know what your teacher said to you about hashtag, but what my ex teacher told me is to never put hashtag because once you put the hashtag, the examiner will only be looking at your final answer and they will be awarding marks for your final answer. But if you don't put the hashtag and the examiner finds the correct answer somewhere, like not at the final line, but maybe at the like fourth line or whatever, they can still award marks for it since you didn't indicate which is your final answer. 
but if you put the hashtag they will only look at the answer which you put the hashtag at so that was what my ex teacher told me so which is why i never used any hashtag if you want book recommendations for modern mathematics i do have one and it is this is true book and it is relatively small in size compared to all the other reference book in the market so it's like it's quite a tiny book and i talked about this in my reference book recommendations video so i'll put a link in the description box below so you can go watch that if you haven't already i talked about all the reference books that i recommended but basically why i recommend this book is that it has sufficient information for modern mathematics to get a plus in modern mathematics because there are some like huge thick books out there for modern mathematics but i think that it is unnecessary to get that because there are more time consuming subjects than modern mathematics and you can use your time to revise for other subjects and if you get a very thick book for modern mathematics it will just intimidate you more <laughs> like imagine having one extra thick book to read so i think that this small withdrew book is already complete and reliable and enough to get that a plus in modern mathematics so those are the eight tips that i have for you in order to get a plus in modern mathematics i hope that this video has been helpful to you and do remember to give it a like if you found it helpful in any way that's all for today's video thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye